Okay, we want to return to the single node pair circuit and resolve it, but this time uh, do so by actually dealing with the dependent current source. So just to be clear, changing the dependent source to the independent source, I mean, changes the problem fundamentally. So what we just solved previously was a, a different problem, one that had a, a an independent current source of 2 milliamps. But now I'd like to go back and um, solve the original problem as it had first been um, shown where we actually uh, consider this current source. So as I mentioned previously, uh, current sources, dependent current or voltage sources can um, can be dependent on either a voltage or current. So we, we actually have four different types of uh, dependent sources. So this could be some, um, some variable, uh, let's see, k times some i x could be a current source that um, is some other constant, call it g times some vx, okay? Could be a dependent voltage source that is dependent on a voltage vx. I'm just using some constant names here, kg, mu. Um, that's not important, it's just a constant. Oops. Oh yes, that was right. I did want to draw that. And here would be um, R times I X. Okay, so this is called a current controlled current source. So it's a current source, but it's controlled by a current, the current I X. The second one is called a voltage controlled current source. Okay, current, it's terrible, current source. Okay, current controlled, voltage controlled. Then we have these two voltage, dependent voltage sources. This is a voltage controlled voltage source, and this is a current controlled voltage source. And here, uh, let's start it with the current control voltage source. Notice that the voltage that is put out, V of this source, is going to be equal to some constant times Ix. The reason I used R for that constant is that it actually would have units of ohms, right? If I'm, if I'm multiplying some constant times I and the result is a voltage, then that constant has a value of ohms. And uh, over here, for a voltage controlled current source, we'd have a current of the source equal to G times Vx, or maybe I should have just used a capital G, okay? The reason I use that is just like here, this would have units of ohms, this would have units of Mohs, okay? Volts times uh, Mohs, or Siemens, would give me current. And in this case here, I have a voltage that's equal to some uh, constant times Vx. This is unitless, right? Unitless. And same for the first case where I'd have I is equal to Kix. Okay, this would be unitless. So th these are very abstract. Um, it might confuse you at first. Go, oh, wow, I have no idea what these things are. Uh, they are abstractions that are used, and, and we will become comfortable with using them later on. Um, because they're used to um, represent other devices. For instance, uh, transistors, which we will study, can be modeled um, as dependent sources. And so you don't buy, like off the shelf, you don't say, I want a dependent source. But there are devices that when you model them um, and try to analyze circuits that involve them, you'll actually use dependent sources as a way to uh, describe their behavior. Uh, another uh, device would be an operational amplifier. We'll talk about that toward the end of the course. And that uses a dependent source as a, as, as a, a, a part of its model. Okay, so there are four dependent sources. And uh, this is kind of a, an aside to solving this problem, but I just wanted to give you uh, a little more of an, um, an introduction to dependent sources. So this particular source that we're using here is, uh, is a 
current controlled current source. So it's this guy right here. Okay. So how do we modify our KCL equation? Well, we're going to modify it by way of we have to get rid of this here. And instead of having minus 2 milliamps, we're going to have minus 2 times Ix. Okay, that can be our first step. Now, what is Ix? Ix is, you see, is the current that's flowing um, up through the 2K resistor. Okay, so we've, did we write what Ix was? Minus Ix. Let's go ahead and write this. Minus Ix, okay, is really equal to, it's pointing down, down through the 2K resistor. So minus Ix is just the unknown voltage V, right? Voltage, uh, this guy here, that's the voltage across that 2K, um, divided by 2 kilo ohms, right? So let me slide that in here. And so we will have, I'll have to rewrite it over. Let's bring it all over here. We'll have V over 6K. Actually, let me combine all the voltages of V, or all the resistances. 1 over 6 kilo ohms. We'll have, um, for our second term, we'll have 2 over 2 kilo ohm, and then plus 1 over 2 kilo ohm. Equal to, and we'll bring the 24 milliamps amps over to the other side. So let's bring up our calculator. So we will have 6 inverse plus 1 inverse plus 2 inverse equals inverse times 24 equals 14.4. V equals 14.4 volts. Now you can always check your work. And the way we would check that here is we would look at KCL. Let me add, uh, let me go to a different color. We check KCL at this point here. So I6 is V over 6K. So it would be 14.4 over 6. This current here is going to be 14.4 over 2K. And then uh, the current leaving here is m actually going to be 2 times the 14.4 over 2K. So it's 14.4 um, times 2 over 2K. So just right under, over 1K. Okay, so we add, we add all that together. And essentially what we note is that, uh, let me bring up the calculator here, we have 14.4 over 6, that leaves on the left, plus 14.4 plus, on the right, 14.4 divided by 2. And all of those three add up to 24 milliamps, and that is precisely how much is coming through or entering the node through our 24 milliamp current source. And so KCL is satisfied.